Hey, good morning. Uh, it's another time to pray, and uh, you're welcome. And like we've all done, we pretty much uh, uh, all shall ourselves into prayer. Just uh, doing a study in uh, the book of Daniel. And we've been in uh, class eight for a while, and we're just going to continue today with class eight. And uh, yesterday we were looking earlier on, on something we started the day before, uh, looking at the fact that uh, that God does not want us to be heavy on our top. You know, Revelation 2 6, Jesus Christ says, in you know, eight, the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which, is, which means it's the doctrine of people or who seemingly overcome the, 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 the people of God. They seemingly subdue the people of God. And we see a lot of that taking place in the church today. You know, it's still more like, uh, Jeroboam spirit wanting to lord it over the people, wanting to in their, their own power, in their own canality, uh, <clears throat> similarly um, enforce their rule, as it were, over God's people. And that is not a God. Jesus Christ says he hates that, right? And, and I don't know why Jesus Christ says he hates it. The people of God should be people that love that. But unfortunately, that's what we see prevailing in the church today. You know, that people want entitled, opposed to general, opposed to, you know, all of those stuff. That is not Christian, not Christianly, that's in government. Right. Where you find that, that's truly not a church. The kingdom of God is not in that place. Right? They might call themselves whatsoever. Um, the standard for the church of God right is john 17 17 jesus christ says separate them by the word mark out the church mark out my people by the word your word is true right anything that is other than the word of god right is not a church right but the word of god defines for us the will of god and jesus christ says on that last day i'm going to say i don't know you because you have not done the will of the father and the will of the father is the word of the father so if there's anything we're doing that is not according to the will of the Father, then we're not a church. It can be anything, but not a church. Uh, it could be a shrine, it could be a temple of demons, it could be a club or society, but surely not the church of a living God. Right? It's not a church of Christ, right? If it doesn't match up, match up to the word of God, because the word of God is our standard. Hey, my sister Beauty, you're welcome. How are you doing? <clears throat> All right. So just pretty much continuing what, what we've been discussing still on um, Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. You know, still keen key in on, on the word resolve. You know, as I was preparing to uh, for this session, you know, I just meditated and the, the scripture I've been mentioning for a while, Acts chapter 17 verse 22 to 31 comes to mind. You know, where Paul says he went to eat at Athens and he saw that place to the unknown God. Why the people were worshiping an unknown God, they were, as it were, reveling in their ignorance of worship. And where there's ignorance, you will not find God. Right? You know, and that's the popular saying by um, Isaac Newton. Right? Isaac Newton posted this way. He says, he who thinks half-heartedly will not believe in God, but he who really thinks has to believe in God, right? If you really think we will believe in God because God is in our thoughts, right? Because, you know, and, and it goes on with what uh, Paul said, because it says that he was talking to those, to those people, I said, ah, how can you people be making God out of strange things? Uh, don't even our elders tell you that we are the offspring of God. If we are the offspring of God, then why would you be making God to look like something that we don't, that doesn't resemble us, right? So and it, when it comes to religion, it's when people don't um, do the diligence to find God or to understand the will of God. That's when religion comes. Religion comes out of laziness. Religion comes out of indiscipline. 
right? Where there, where there is discipline, religion has no place, right? But let's go ahead and pray. We'll continue afterwards. And all right, just as we were sharing in the morning, you know, it, it, just to tie back to Acts chapter two, um, Acts chapter, there was that two, chapter, chapter 17, verse 22 to 31, you know, and that ties along with what Isaac Newton says, that when we think avatedly, we cannot believe in God, you know, and just today, there's this woman that preaches that people seem to send around our message and all of that. And she's, I think she's mad. I think she's crazy. I think she has no clue what she's talking about. And surprising thing is that you have people following her because she says crazy things. You know, what people were sending around today was something where she was saying that if people bob their hair and they show the skin of their head that it's a sin, you know? <laughs> and you don't, you wonder where she's getting that from. Again, our doctrine, our constitution is the word of God. If there's anything that we hear or we do that is contrary to the word of God, we stop being Christians. That's the whole idea of Galatians chapter 3. Paul talking to the Galatian church. He says, who has bewitched you? Who has made you foolish? To follow after something that is different from the, from the right way, from, to follow after something that is different from the truth. You started in the spirit. Why are you not following in the flesh? Because all of this, anything that is not according to the word of God is of the flesh. And people do it for different reasons other than God, right? You have to be careful that we only go do things that are in accordance to the word of God because that's what that's a, that's, a, that's a way of the spirit because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the word, right? It will not support anything other than the word of God. His mandate here is to... Is to, is, to, is, to, is to agree with the word, is to, is to, is to, is to share the word, is to expand the word to us, is to explain the word to us, to shed light on the word of God, is to, is to cause wisdom, wisdom to be born by the reason of the word that will take into us, is to comfort us, is to direct us, is to help us, is to partner with us by virtue of the word. It will not part, partner with us outside the word of God. So when we're, when we're passive, we don't have like giving place. He needs our active participant for him to have the fullness of his work in our lives, right? And John to that, you know, is uh, John Calvin. You know, John Calvin says that until we know ourselves, we cannot know God. And when we know God, we know ourselves. He's, he's just saying that the knowledge of ourselves and the knowledge of God are so intertwined together that you cannot know God without knowing yourself. And you cannot know yourself without knowing God because we're his offspring. We have God created us to just be little hymns, to bring him glory, to, 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 to show forth his, the, 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 his manifest wisdom or, or just to show forth himself, to show forth his glory, true beings that he has created, right? <laughs> And, and joining to that, we have Thomas Fuller also says that he that knows nothing will believe anything, right? For us to believe something, we must know something. It's a knowledge that forms the foundation for belief, right? Belief is not something that just comes in an empty space, right? When we know the word of God, it forms the foundation for our belief, right? So that's why the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing about the word of God. So when God talks to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, about the fact that he needed to let the word of God not depart from his, from his mouth, he was for him to build faith. Because the more you dwell on the word, the more you meditate on the word, the more you, 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 you mass yourself in the word, the more you fellowship with the word, the more faith will build in you, right? And the last of that in, in that series, not even the last, probably still more, but Miles Monroe puts it like this, says, teaching is not the mere impartation of knowledge, but the cultivation of an inquiring mind, right? We need to be a, pretty much talking about that, that when we teach is to create also an hunger for more, more of God inside of us, right? You know, all of, the, all of this still just points to one fact, we need to be active.
actively participating in our worship of God. We need to actively know him, actively meditate on him, actively seek to know him, to know ourselves. That's the only place where we can be all that he wants us to be, right? Being passive will not work it. I'm going to stop there for the sake of time. All righty. My sister, I'm, I'm done. You have anything you want to add to that? No, no, I'm still in the market. Well. You're still in the market. Awesome, awesome. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you for joining the market. I hope you got some things. God bless. Bless you. Let me let you go. We'll talk later. Have a great weekend. All right. Bye. All right.